your lights, your fridge, your air conditioning, all things that pretty much keep our lives running. Imagine going 10, 15, maybe even 20 days without it. Our neighbors in New Orleans know that feeling following Hurricane Ida. There is now a lawsuit accusing a Louisiana power company of grossly inadequate maintenance and inspection of a system that would not sustain even a hurricane with wind gusts below 100 miles per hour. Hurricane Ida produced more than 170 mile per hour wind gusts. That has our Liz Crawford looking into the state of Florida's power grid and if it could stand up against a massive storm. Let's start at the beginning. How does the power reach your home in the first place? It starts with generating the power at a power plant. Then it goes out on massive transmission lines to substations where the power must travel again, this time by distribution lines into our homes and businesses. Catastrophic damage can occur anywhere. The majority of Duke Energy and Tampa Electric customers were left in the dark in 2017 after Hurricane Irma hit Florida. But most had power restored in eight days. Power companies considered that successful. Because most of the, um you know, impact and damage that occurred were more broken poles and wires, the more traditional type of impact that you'd expect during that level of a storm. The very next year, Hurricane Michael was a different story. In parts of the panhandle, Duke Energy had to start over. It really uh, didn't just break our equipment. It literally just completely removed it. It took them two weeks to untangle wires and rebuild. Transmission poles don't always come down, but in a Cat 5, that's the kind of damage that you see. Hurricanes aside, there could be an outage somewhere every day, especially during the rainy season. Look at this map. Multiple outages, including some in Tampa Bay, and it's a non-threatening weather day. All of this and the threat of hurricanes prompted the state to strengthen our system. So what is being done? We are installing flood walls, and, and in some cases, we might be raising equipment from um, off the ground to better protect it from storm surge. Duke Energy and Tico are putting more lines underground. Underground lines are more reliable during severe weather, and that can reduce the number of outages for folks and reduce the length of outages. Tico says it's costing them $100 million a year. But really, customers are footing the bill. The uh, big power companies are very happy to upgrade the system in terms of undergrounding transmission lines. To get to the bottom of why changes are really happening, we found Susan Glickman. They make uh, money by putting concrete in the ground, by capital expenditures. She has been a climate and energy advocate for 20 years. She thinks Florida has a big problem. It should be a concern from a reliability point of view and it's a concern from an economic point of view. Our power grids rely heavily on gas. There's also a concern because burning this methane gas is a big greenhouse gas polluter. Tico says natural gas makes up 85% of their fuel mix. Duke Energy is 77% gas. There's a big hurricane in the Gulf and the gas supplies can't get here. I, you know, that could be, I mean, it could be a problem. So yes, Florida power companies know the threat and they're preparing. But the truth is, if a Cat 5 hits us, we could be lights out for a while. Which is even scary to think about given the increase in storms out there in the tropics. Power companies, you, we heard about burying more lines underground across the state, customers paying for it. Let's take a deeper dive where those lines are getting buried. In Hillsborough County, Crown Tico is putting lines underground on Tyrone Road just off North Florida Avenue near Lake Magdalene. Another spot they're working on is Columbus Drive just east of Alfred Albarns Park. Duke Energy didn't give us specific locations, but a spokesperson said they use data from the past 10 years to prioritize which lines get buried.